Today we will be looking at the Psalms as we begin a new teaching theme through them. The Psalms I would describe as one of the realist books in the Bible. We can describe them as songs and poems, but really they are emotions and and tensions of, of living in this world and knowing that God has more for us, knowing that God wants more for us. There is a real grit to the Psalms. Each Psalm brings into reality what this world is like, its pain, its suffering, and the effects of the broken world but it also brings in the reality of who God is his love his acts of protection his willingness for more but here's the thing both sides are held side by side it's not given us permission to slip from suffering to glory but for us to live in the tension, to battle and seek God in our own lives. The Psalms ultimately give us permission to acknowledge our strugglings, but within the truth of who God is. Psalm 3 says this, O Lord, I have so many enemies, so many are against me, so many are saying, Your God will never rescue him. But you, our Lord, are a shield around me. You are my glory, the one who holds my head high. I cried out to the Lord and he answered me from his holy mountain. I lay down and slept, yet I woke up in safety. For the Lord is watching over me. I am not afraid of 10,000 enemies who all surround me on every side. Arise, O Lord, rescue me, my God. At this point, David had just been run out of Jerusalem by his own son. He was, up until this point, living in a place of safety, wealth, community and family. He sort of had everything that he needed. Then he instantly lost it all. No home, no family. His wealth was gone. The loss of his whole community. I don't know about you, but last weekend we brought out our small paddling pool. Now they are great fun, but there is a challenge of the cold water. I really... I really don't like getting into it. But the kids love it and have no concern that the water is cold. They see the shock of the water being freezing as a small price to pay for the joy which will follow. And that's where I struggle. I struggle to see beyond it. I'm effectively afraid of the cold water. I stand there for a few minutes preparing myself but I'm encouraged by my children to just step in. I suppose this helps me understand David here. He has stepped into this cold, dark place, but lifts his head towards the joy that will come. It's just what's happening now, and it doesn't affect his future or the relationship with God. Imagine, if you like, him jumping into the pool like my daughter. Cold, lips blue, shivering, but so full of joy. It's tough for many of us now, without a doubt, but we must acknowledge it. We could get caught in the trap of pretending that we are fine, pretending that everything is okay, that What is happening around us is not really affecting us. But that's not what David is doing here. He is showing us that we need to step into our pain, step into our suffering, to weep, to mourn. Because if you acknowledge the suffering, 
we are drawn into a deep understanding of the truth of our faith. Through this stepping into our suffering, we are drawn into the God's arms of protection and safety. David steps into the pain and into God's arms and both are drawn into tension. But David is not afraid. Not afraid. That is the good news we proclaim. A God who is within our suffering as well as our blessings. A God who stepped into the pain and coldness of death to bring us life. This is the tension. This is the tension of cold and joy. Come 